Supper. find a seat now and we'll get started. The Bible says let everything be done decently and in order. And over in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 it gives the order and the meaning of the Lord's table. Uh, this is not communion. Uh, communion is uh, Catholic or whatever you want to call it. It has nothing to do with uh, the church. As far as God's church, this is the Lord's table or the Lord's supper. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That is a very stern warning. If you're here tonight and you've got sin in your life, we'll have an invitation here before we partake of this. You'll have a time to come up and get those unconfessed sins under the blood. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he goes on to say that in verse 29, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, in other words, because they've done this, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In other words, they're dead. God's killed them. That's how stern and serious this is. This is not to be taken lightly. Bible says in verse 31, For if we would judge ourselves, Amen. we should not be judged. Amen. We need to look on the inside of you. That's where God looks. He knows you. He knows me. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, Carry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Paul said, look, I'm going to straighten everything out when I get there, but right now you need to adhere to what I'm telling you here in this portion of Scripture. We need to let every man examine himself. And right now we're going to have a time of invitation. Whenever I closed, every head bowed, you just ask God, God, what do you have me to do? And if there's something to reveal that unknown sin in my heart and my life, and he will, I guarantee you.
Amen. Let's have our men come. And Brother Rex, why don't you ask the blessing on the bread? Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' precious name. Lord, we do pray and as we celebrate what you've done for us, we ask, Lord, that you just soak this congregation over. Should there be somebody here that's not saved like there was this morning, we pray, Lord, that they would want to get saved tonight. <coughs> beautiful message we had this morning. I ask you, Lord, to help us to be worthy and to recognize what you've done for us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Hmm. 
Brother Rod, why don't you ask the blessing on the fruit of the vine? Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we remember what you've done for us, Lord, yes. oh, we just want to thank you, Lord, for that precious blood that you shed to save our souls. <coughs> Lord God, we just want to give you praise as we remember this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's stand and we'll sing a verse of Blessed Be the Tie. Let's have the choir come on up. What now? Is it your smoke? Just move on. Where did that come from?
Lord. Well, I tell you, if you only learn one thing in this life, and that's the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've been born again, that's one thing you know, right? Amen. Amen. Stand with me. Take your songbook and turn to 200 and... No, that's... Wrong song. 450. 450. This would be my wife's, grandma's favorite song. So therefore, it's my wife's favorite song. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? There will never be a sweeter story. Story of the Savior's love divine. Love the God and the
Amen, amen. amen. Well, I tell you, I feel the spirit here tonight. We've been here all day. Yes. Four got saved this morning. Amen. Praise amen. his name. You know the power of God's in the house when people are getting saved and getting saved. Amen. Uh, we have any first time visitors here tonight? Got one down here. Amen. amen. She's been here before. <laughs> amen. Any other visitors? No? Well, how about the rest of us? We'll stand up and shake hands and fellowship. <laughs> Tried to sing a while ago and they wouldn't let me. So 261. 261, we'll sing Trust and Go Bad.
Uh, Brother Denmar, would you pray, please? Oh, yes, Lord. Trust and obey. Mother, we come to your house to praise you this night in the safety of this wonderful church. Oh, Lord, we do thank you for the leadership that you've brought into this nation. Father, we pray that you'll continue to guide them. We pray that they will continue to come unto you as they need help, Lord. Lord, we thank you for these last few days. Lord, we know that things will be better. We know that the only way that this country can become great again is with you, with your hand upon it. Oh, Lord, we do thank you. Thank you, thank you. Lord, we already know, we already see the difference. Lord, thank you, thank you. Lord, we do thank you for the church. We thank you for those who are so faithful unto us. Lord, we know that there's only one way, one way. And that's your way. Lord, we give thanks for all this. And we ask this, all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Good evening back to y'all then. Amen? Right after service. School board meeting. Don't y'all jump up all at once. But anyway, right after the service, if you're in the school board, Darlene said y'all having a meeting tonight, so that's it. So don't take off. And then our next appointed time will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Pastor Spiritual Warfare Bible Study right next door in the fellowship hall. If you haven't been to it, you're invited. Amen? You're invited. We don't turn anybody away. Everybody, nobody learns too much about God. Amen? Amen? Or about the Bible. And if you think you do, well, then you've been deceived. Amen? Amen. Tuesday night, or Tuesday morning at 1045, Assisted Living Visitation. Brother Pennington, they go out there and they see those folks and they have a great time. And then at 6 p.m. on Tuesday evening is our home visitation. The whole church should be participating in some kind of visitation. Amen? Amen? Shouldn't we be reaching out? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's how them people got saved this morning. Somebody went and fetched them up. Amen? Amen? Amen. But anyway, if you can't uh, physically go visit, just pick up the phone and call somebody. Amen? Amen? Everybody in here knows somebody that needs to get saved. I guarantee you that. But anyway, that's at 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, our midweek service at 7 p.m. Be in your place for that. Be faithful to God's house. And then Friday at 7 p.m. is a Reformers Unanimous class right here in the auditorium. Everyone's invited. Saturday morning, Shell Factory Flea Market at 8.30. They start handing out tracts. But the good thing about that, you don't need to be at the shelf factory. Do that wherever you're at. Amen. Amen. And then at 8 p.m. on Saturday <coughs> evening is our church-wide prayer meeting. So that's at 8 p.m. And everybody's invited to that. No such thing as too much prayer. Amen. Amen. And I'm talking for me. I don't pray enough. Like preacher said, none of us have arrived yet. Right. Amen. 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 But anyway, and if you can't be here, just pray at the house. That'll work. And then coming up next Saturday, the teens are going to be having a yard sale and a car wash right here in the church grounds. Amen. Amen. They always work hard at that, and that's a great time. And then next Sunday morning, evening. And morning, Evangelist Mike Todd's going to be here. This man's a blessing to me. Amen. He is a blessing. If you haven't heard him, you're in for it. 
And then uh, next Sunday night, the youth are going to have an afterglow in the fellowship hall. That's going to be immediately after church. And Chris says they get about done about 9 o'clock or so. And that's from ages 10 and up. And then coming up in February the 5th, man, that's all we, we're always getting close to February, folks. It's, we're, it's going by quick. But anyway, the Foresters are going to be here in concert in, the, um, in our evening service on February the 5th. And then February the 11th, the adults are back at it. The 50-plus lunch crowd, they're going to meet at noon in the fellowship hall. And everybody that comes bring a side dish and drinks to share. Meat will be provided and use the sign-up sheet in the foyer and let us know if you will be attending. And that will bring us up to February 20, which is President's Day. Amen? And then what time does church start? Y'all need to be here for Sunday school at 10 o'clock, 11 for our morning service, the prayer meetings at 4.30, choir at 5, and it'll bring us right back to where we are in our evening service at 6 o'clock. <coughs> we just need to keep, keep our church going in the right direction, amen? amen? Satan hates his place, but our Lord is greater than him. Right. Amen. 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 We're on the winning side. Amen. So put a smile on your face. Yeah. No matter how bad it gets, it's been bad, it gets rough, but we're on the winning side. Amen. 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 A little bit of a problem, not bad with OCD. Oh, 
You need something, Miss Smith? No. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, thank you, Brother Rex. Well, the, the, the two plates are not even on each side. Well, I can't see them right here, so I'm good. I'm going to stay right here. I can't help it. I'm, like, I'm my daddy's son. That's all I can say. And Granny's just sitting there smiling. <laughs> Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians with me. 1 Corinthians is just before 2 Corinthians. Uh -huh. So you should be able to find it. Or you can use the hunt and peck method or the eeny, meeny, miny, mo, where she flops, there I go method or whatever. But we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, you never know what God's going to do in a service. And I just, I don't know, I love preaching. Whether I'm doing it or somebody else, I just love preaching. Amen. The harder, the better. I like it. I like strong preaching. I like yeah. loud preaching. I like soft preaching. I just like preaching if it's in this book. Yeah. Yes, and uh, Amen. and nothing's ever going to happen unless the Holy Ghost gets involved in it. Amen. 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 I can't do it. You can't do it. The greatest preacher to ever live can't do it unless the Holy Ghost gets involved. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm asking God to get involved here tonight. I want to I want to stir it in here. Amen. I just <laughs> I don't know if my body can do it, but I'm ready. After this morning, I was wrung out, but I'll tell you what, I'm doing all right now. I feel pretty good. I got a little refreshing going on here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. For I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Howbeit, we spake wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which, is, or which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But... As it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? save the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, that's the unsaved man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them 
because they are spiritually discerned. That spiritually discerned, in other words, they can't understand the things of God. Why? Because they don't have the Spirit of God that guides us into all truth. Verse 15, it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you tonight for Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the great service we had this morning, those four precious souls that were saved. Lord, I thank you, God, for the fact that you love us. And the Lord God, you're willing, God, just to do it again. And Lord, I pray that, God, you might help each one of us here have a longing in our heart tonight to see something from you. Lord, to experience the presence and the power of God in this place. And Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that's not saved, God, they don't know where they're going to spend eternity. God, I pray that something might be said that the Holy Spirit of God could use to show them of your marvelous grace and your love toward them. The Bible says in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, I praise you and I thank you, God, for that. And Lord, you've got some things prepared in heaven for us. Jesus Your son said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, if I go away and prepare a place for you, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And God, we've got promise after promise in the word of God of the great riches that God, you have prepared for us that love you. And Lord, I pray right now, God, the Spirit of God, that anointing power from on high might fall upon this message, upon your messenger. And Lord, get me out of the way and God, preach through me here tonight. Lord, help us, God, to get a glimpse of your grace and your glory. Lord, draw that backslider back to the way they ought to be with you. Lord, that sinner that's on her way to hell, God, I pray that you'd save them here tonight. And Lord, just we'll be careful, God, to give you the honor and the praise and the glory for every bit of it. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have something already prepared to do, and I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I don't know. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 2, the Bible says, Paul's reading here, writing here, he says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. See, it's not what we know, it's not who we know, it's not what we do, the abilities we have, but we need to know Him. We need to know the power of His resurrection. We need to know the power of of his sacrifice for us. See, when he died on that old rugged cross, he was hanging there between heaven and the earth, and when he said, it is finished, you know what happened? He finished every transaction, every sacrifice that God ever demanded for sin. He did it one time for all. I thank God for that. The precious blood of the Lamb of God was shed that we yes. might have life. Yes, thank you. And Paul said, I, 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 I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That word demonstration is basically a word that refers to manifestation or the appearing of the power of God. See, when the Word of God is preached, the power of God is involved in it when it's Holy Ghost preaching. I know I had a lady some years ago when I was up in North Carolina. She asked me, she says, uh, are you a Holy Ghost preacher? Well, I said, well, yeah. 
She said, well, do you get loud when you preach? And I said, well, yeah. She said, do you move around when you preach? And I said, well, yeah. She says, do you get a little excited when you preach? And I said, well, yeah. And she went over and she said, well, then you must be a Holy Ghost preacher. And I want to let you know when the Holy Ghost of God gets in preaching, honey, there's some things going to happen. And I want to let you know that that demonstration, that manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God and the power of His crucifixion, the power of His resurrection is going to be involved in it. And it's going to do something in the hearts of the ones that's hearing it. It ought to change you. Well, I tell you what, when I got saved, there was a change in me. When God come down in my heart, man, He saved my soul and He changed me from the inside out. I know when I first got saved, I didn't look like I was saved. I still had hair down to here. I I looked like a hippie. I was acting like a hippie, but glory, hallelujah, there was something different inside of me and I won't let you know I ain't changed none and it's getting a little worse. I tell you what, God saved my soul. He picked me up and saved my soul. And I'm glory, hallelujah. I'm on my way to heaven. I don't have to worry about dying and going to hell no more. God saved me. Amen. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, God will save you. Amen. I mean, it took, a, it took a little while for the outside to catch up with the inside. Don't get me wrong now. You know, some of these folks that just got saved don't expect them to look like they've been saved for 20 years right away. But that that work that God begins inside of you is a little at a time. And like I was saying, you know, we were talking at RU last night or Friday night. You know, you take a little step over here and you get a little closer to God and then you take a little step and get here, you know, God reveals something else to you. Every little step gets you a little bit closer. And there's something inside of you working that's showing you that. And there's something inside of you that wants to do that. There's something that constrains me. I don't know about you, but there's something that constrains me. And I tell you what, I'm looking. I'm looking for the manifestation, that appearing of the power of God in here tonight. And it's up to us. If you want God to do something, honey, I guarantee it'll start with you. Amen. And i tell you what, don't say, well, I'm not going to have nothing like that happen to me, man. Honey, i tell you what, if God comes on the scene and you get your heart right with God, you ain't going to care what nobody else thinks, right. what nobody else cares. Right. You want to get your heart in tune with God's heart. And Amen. glory, hallelujah, I guarantee you, you're going to say, okay, God, bring it on. Let's have it. And see this scripture we're talking about, we're dealing with. Let me get back up here so I can read it. It says, in verse 4, it says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. Paul didn't come to them saying, well, you're a good fellow, you're a good gal. He came up there and told them, he says, you're a sorry, no good sinner. If you don't get saved, you're going to die and go to hell. That's right. Amen. That ain't enticing words. Enticing words, I'd say, you know, I come up and say, well, you know, every one of y'all are, I'll give you a better illustration than that, that sign down the road. I put on there, the choice is yours on our sign, the bread of life or burnt toast. The church down the road says, you're not toast. God loves you. <laughs> that is enticing work. Now, if you was lost, what would you rather have happen or listen to? Burnt toast? Or you're not burnt toast, God loves you? See, that's enticing words. See, somebody that's self-righteous, that's religious, they like stuff like that. Those of us that are saved, we're blood-bought and blood-washed, we're on our way to heaven. That's right. Amen. You cannot offend a spiritual Christian by hard preaching. Amen. You can't do it. Amen. I know when we first come here, I never will forget. You know, we we come. You know, when I, I 
I was used to preaching up in North Carolina in that little church we had up there, and them people, the harder you preach, the better they like it. And I, I, I just, I was preaching the same way I preached there. And my wife said one Sunday, you know, she said, honey, she said, you better kind of give me this ease up just a little bit. You know, them folks might not handle that. Well, see, y'all made the mistake when you called me to be preacher here. <laughs> and I've had people over the, since I've been here try to change that. No. Not that my wife was trying to change me. She was trying to help me, which she always does that. Amen. <laughs> I do. I mean, I still remember every, almost, not every Sunday, but some of them Sundays on the way home from church up there in North Carolina, she'd say, well, honey, you sure butchered the King's English today. <laughs> I still do that, don't I? See, it don't take. Well, see, I'm trying to learn them good English. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I've got a whole year of college English behind me, and I made A's and B's in it. Took me six whole months to get over that year. <laughs> but I've got over it. You ain't seen nothing yet, honey. <laughs> In verse 7 it says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, the wisdom of God only comes true the Spirit of God. In order to have the wisdom of God, you've got to have God. You've got to have the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, the Bible says, will guide us into all truth. You heard anybody say, well, I just don't understand that King James Bible. It's just, it's just hard to understand. What you've got to understand there is the Holy Spirit wrote this book. And the Holy Spirit of God interprets this book. And if you don't have the interpreter, you won't understand it. And uh, I'm getting to what I'm going to pray. I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm getting worked up for it. Just wait with me. And it says in verse 9, it says, but as it is written. And that's kind of an interesting thing to put because verse 8, let's read verse 8. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Right. In other words, they couldn't undo what they had already done. Then it says in verse 9, it's kind of interesting why God put this in between that. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. A lot of things, a lot of people, you know, and I've heard people teach this and preach this, that, you know, we get to heaven, we're just going to be overwhelmed. And I kind of, I mean, just the majesty of heaven is going to be overwhelming. But see, we can know, we can know what it's going to be like. How can we know that? Well, look at verse 10. But God hath revealed, that word revealed, it means to take the cover off. But God hath revealed them unto us, how? By his Spirit. Amen. For the Spirit searcheth, that word searcheth, it means to seek. The Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep, the mystery things of God. Amen. So see, Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. He said that a lot. He said over Colossians 1, about that mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came on those Old Testament prophets, but the Holy Spirit of God could also lead 
But the New Testament, the Bible says that we're sealed until the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit of God when we get saved. There's a seal put on us. Remember what David said over there after he sinned. He said, let not thy Holy Spirit depart from me. I'm not worried about the Holy Spirit of God departing from me because I'm sealed. I've got the seal of God on me. I just want to preach a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. I'm going to kind of... Uh, Y'all listen fast and we'll get through with this. Verse 9. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen or ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. I want to preach a message if you want to put a title to it. It will be worth it after all. All the troubles and toils and trials that we've had in this life, it will be worth it all. The first thing I want to show you where it's going to be worth it all, take your Bibles and turn over to Revelation with me, Revelation chapter 19. We just got through teaching this, went through the whole book of Revelation. I don't know how long it took us, but it seems like with all everything we got going, it took a while. Revelation chapter, did I say 19? Yes, well, don't put your finger there, but turn to chapter 1. I can't even read my writing. Chapter 1 and verse 9. I'm seeing double up here. Praise the Lord. Well, look at verse 18. Revelation. Oh, wait a minute now. Do y'all remember when I was going through the first part of Revelation where I said these pages, when I got it rebound or out of whack? This is where it is. I got to look at it and I said, this don't line up. I was looking at verse 19 of chapter 2, which my Bible here goes from Revelation chapter 1 in verse 3 on one page on 1330. And it goes to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17 of 1333. That'll mess you up. That's bad on an old guy. All right, now I've got, I'm over here now. Look at Revelation chapter 1. Look at verse 19. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Whenever we get to heaven and we see the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us, let's go back up just a little bit into verse 9. And it says... And I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. I don't know about you. Can you imagine sitting there trying to worship the Lord and all of a sudden behind you, you heard the voice as of a great trumpet. I guarantee you that would startle you, wouldn't it? But that almost tells me that John was kind of looking in the wrong direction. He heard behind him the voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and to Pergamos, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw the seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about with a paps of a with a golden girdle, and his head and his hairs were like wool, as white as snow, 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. John says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Flat on his face. And he laid his hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of death and of hell. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. It's all about him. It's not about us. Right. It's all about him. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11 it says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When we do anything, we need to praise him. And I'll tell you what, it'll be worth it all when you see him, the one that loved us and gave himself for it. It'll be worth it after all when we see heaven. You know, the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth, the new city of God, New Jerusalem, descending down from God out of heaven there in Revelation 21. The, the, and you start thinking about the perfection of all things. There's not going to be any more sin. There's not going to be any unrighteousness in that city. And I'll tell you, the citizens of that city are going to be fashioned like unto Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's going to be worth it after all when we see God. I can't imagine what it'd be like. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time and lived. You remember when Moses, he wanted to see God, and God said, okay, I'll show you the hinder part of my glory. He hit him in the cleft of the rock, and his glory passed by him, and he saw the rear end of the glory of God. And it changed him. It changed him. He was never the same since. Paul, when he was called up to that third heaven, he said, I said, I know a man above 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but such a man was called up to the third heaven, and that man saw things that was not lawful for a man to utter. You know, from that point on, Paul had a death wish. Oh, yeah. For me to live as Christ, but to die is gain. There's so many people this day and time that are fearful of death. A child of God, I mean, you shouldn't, I mean, nobody really wants to die. You know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But you know, the longer I live down here, it's a little bit... I, I, don't, I, don't, want the, I don't want to go through all of the... You know, I'd just soon have a Mack truck hit me and be over with. It's the suffering that's involved in that. Or have the big one. I'd love to be preaching and have the big one. Just, I'm gone. That would be good too, but I think I'd rather be preaching. Maybe about the fourth or fifth row, man, just keel over. And I've got a do not resuscitate order on my life. Darlene's got it. Huh? Good. 
I'm going to die with a smile on my face. You say, preacher, this is getting morbid thinking about dying. I want to see God. Take your, take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 6 with me. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And look at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. That's on page 718. Verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, or said, then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Yes, then flew one of the seraphims in, unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. I guarantee you my wife was holding her breath when I read that. I might as well share the story with you. Amen. Well, I mean, we're on the internet. I tell the whole world. I was preaching this, this verse here, or that portion of Scripture, and where it says tongs, I said thongs. <laughs> I'm just an old Florida redneck. I didn't even know what that was then. That's right, exactly. You know, ignorance is bliss. I just looked at him and said, I got no idea why you're laughing, so I just went on preaching. You know, it's good when the brethren can come together and fellowship and have a good time. Amen. I think somebody said that in our men's prayer room in there. We had, I think, 16 or 18 in my office. 18? Yeah, I was waiting on 19 and he didn't show. Had to go get some chairs out of the fellowship for everybody. Amen. Fellowship hall. That's, That's good. Yeah. But you know, God come down in that room. Amen. It wasn't about the numbers, though. But still, God still come down in there. Amen. It's going to be worth it after all when we see our friends and loved ones. Yes. You know, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 10, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, white, clean and white, for the linen, or the fine linen, is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. If you're saved, you're going to be there. We're going to see our loved ones, our family, our friends that are saved, that have gone on to be with the Lord. Can you imagine what a reunion that's going to be? Amen. Glory, hallelujah. 
It's going to be worth it after all when we see those loved ones. It's going to be worth it after all when we see the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20. Turn over Revelation 20. I want to read that to you. I, I think we ought to see everything that's ahead of us. Revelation chapter 20. And look at verse 11. Well, let's start at verse 7. I think we'll that'll be good. It says, And when the thousand years were, were, are expired... Now, Satan's going to be chained up in a bottomless pit for a thousand years during the millennial reign of Christ. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go, out, shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There wasn't a shot fire. Right. Fire came Amen. down from heaven and devoured them. You say, preacher, you believe that? I sure do. Amen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Right. Honey, that ought to encourage anybody that's lost to get saved. Right. You're not guaranteed the next second in this right. life. Right. You're not guaranteed any time at all. And the Bible says, behold, today is the day of salvation. This is the appointed time. God has brought you here for a reason. If you're not saved, you ought to come down. And I give this invitation in just a minute. You ought to come down here saying, I need to find out what it's all about. And we can take the word of God and show you how you can know that you have eternal life. And you won't have to stand before that judgment, that great white throne judgment. You can stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's a lot better. At least you're going to be in heaven. Hallelujah, Amen. man. Because you know God loves you. Amen. But it'll be worth it all when we see, when we see God. When we see the great white throne. When we see Jesus. I'll tell you what, it's going to be worth everything that you've ever done. All the stuff you've gone through in this life. You can say, it's been worth it all. Amen. Praise His holy name. Amen. Ever eye closed, ever head bowed, let's stand to our feet. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you and praising you for Jesus. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord, if there's somebody here that's not saved, God, you know every heart, you know every mind, every soul. Lord, you know your children, and you know the ones that aren't. But God, I know you died for all of us. Lord, you died for the sin of the whole world. But well, Lord, the only ones that receive what you've done for us can be saved. And God, I pray right now, God, the Holy Spirit of God would draw those ones that need salvation here tonight. And Lord, I also believe that Holy Spirit of God can convict, Lord, of sin. And if some of your children here, God, they, they've got something that they need to get out of their life, I pray, God, that you'd give them that power of the Holy Spirit of God to get rid of it, to have victory over it. God, I pray the Lord you just have your perfect will here tonight. 
Let Jesus Christ be uplifted and honored and glorified. Help us, Lord, to realize that, God, when we get to heaven, boy, when we see it all, it's going to be worth everything that we've gone through down here in this world. All the persecution, all the trials, all the testing, Lord, it's going to be worth everything. And we ask this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You mind the Lord here tonight, church. You obey that Holy Spirit. praying for one another. Uh, be praying for Sister Gail up there in the hospital and hope she gets home this week. And uh, pray for all the ones that aren't here that should be here. Just pray that you encourage and call them up. Say, Amen, we missed you. You missed a good service. And you mind the Lord. Obey that precious Holy Spirit. And Brother Chris, why don't you close us here tonight. Father, it's truly good to be in your presence today, Father, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that God just keep our hearts focused in on you, Lord God. Help us to always seek first the kingdom of God, Lord. We pray that God be in every prayer request that was lifted up before you, Lord. But I ask God personally, Lord God, that you put somebody in each and every one of our lives, Lord God, that we can tell about Jesus. Yes. Lord, Lord, Lord. Yes. Whether it be through conversation, through text, through email, however you have it done, Lord. Helps to share the love of Jesus Christ with somebody, Lord. Amen. And I pray that God you help us to move closer towards the kingdom of God, Lord. Amen. I pray that God you increase our prayer lives, our Bible reading lives, Lord God, Amen. so we can be better Christians for you, Lord. Amen. And Lord God, we can break this mold of Christianity, Lord God, of, 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 of being what the world says we should be, Lord, and just do things Amen. the way the Bible says, Father. Amen. And Lord God, we love you and thank you and ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.